So whether you've just got your RG Ally or Ally X or have had it since launch day like I have, these are the top 10 tips that you absolutely need to know, including the one that I get asked about the most. So as we get started, I assume that you've already fully optimized your Ally using my 14 step guide. And if you haven't for some reason, then the link is below. Tip one is that as we know, the command center button is incredibly useful for things like change between silent, performance, manual and turbo modes. But holding down the command center button is effectively our control alt and delete function. We can head into the task manager and force quit any games if a game glitches out and quickly need to end it. Tip two is another button that we use a lot on the ally, which is our armory crate button. And a super helpful feature that you may not know is that holding down this button actually brings up the button mappings that we've assigned, which is super helpful to know. And we'll talk more about button mapping shortly. Tip three is to make sure you know the ally's shortcuts. So on the rear left is the M2 button and holding this down and pressing the D-pad up brings up the keyboard. Holding M2 and the left D-pad takes us to the desktop. M2 and the right D-pad brings up the task switcher. M2 and down D-pad for the task manager. M2 plus X for display options. M2 plus A to take a screenshot. M2 plus Y to start the screen recording. And finally, M2 and B to show all of our notifications. To locate our screenshots and screen recordings, let's open our folder, open the C drive, click on users, Click on your name, so in my case, Pete. Head into videos at the bottom, into captures, and yes, here is where they're all stored, kind of hidden away. Tip four relates to when we launch our Steam games from Army Crate, as the main Steam window and indeed other windows usually annoyingly pop up instead. Let's click on the top left Steam, then head into settings, go down to interface, and disable this toggle button called notify me about additions or changes to games, new releases and upcoming releases. Doing this makes launching Steam games smoother and removes any small annoying Steam pop-up adverts. And while we can't fully remove the main window after exiting the game, it does make life a little bit easier. Tip five is how to tweak game settings to get the very best performance. And there are two websites I highly recommend to help us with this. The first is rogally.games and a link is below and we can search for games and also see what settings that other ally users have used too which is neat. Like the Resident Evil 4 one that I think was done by our great viewer Droid. And the other is a fantastic resource for us ally users in rgallylife.com, again link below. There are many great articles here and if we head into the game settings tab, we can search for any game here too, as well as browse literally hundreds of games, each with super helpful and very specific guides to get the very best from all of our games. I've based my Black Ops 6 and also Indiana Jones video guides on these and I highly recommend that you check out RG Ally Life. Tip six relates to when we boot into Windows and all the apps like Xbox, Ubisoft Connect, EA Play and other apps that auto load, which is super annoying and slows down Windows boot up time. To disable all these unneeded and super annoying auto startup apps, let's press the start menu, head into settings, click on apps, click the bottom startup option and toggle off whatever you want. So in my case is the EA app, Microsoft Edge browser, the AMD app, the Xbox app and also the Windows notifications and so booting into Windows will now be so much quicker. Tip 7 is to always head into the options in whatever game that we're playing, into the graphics area and always make sure that VSync is set to off with it being on by default pretty much all the time. And this is because we actually don't need it on due to our RG Ally or Ally X's display already having that amazing feature called the variable refresh rate or VRR for short. And we only need to enable it if we are playing any games that are well above the 120 FPS that the screen can handle to avoid any screen tearing. Turning off VSync in games is something that I often forget to do. So a big thank you to our great viewers like WalterG74 for reminding me. Man, you viewers are so smart. And now let's look at our final top three tips.
tip eight is about the best way to sleep or ally. And of course, many of us think that, yeah, just hit the sleep button, right? But doing this often allows Windows to start doing weird stuff, including software updates. And many times when I've done this, in its case, it's ended up heating up, which of course is not good. So the very best way is to hit command center and hit the hibernate button. And this will save the state that the ally is in before shutting down. And while it's not quite the same as the incredible true sleep and resume functionality like we get when using Bazite within SteamOS, it's as close as we're gonna get with Windows. Tip nine is how to do button mapping correctly, as I always get loads of comments about the mapping of the rear M1 and M2 buttons in particular. So first of all, make sure that no games are open and that we're in Armory Crate, and there are two ways to do this. The first is globally, which applies to all games, every single game. So if we head into settings, then configure within control mode, then gamepad mode, and in this key mapping area, what we map here will apply, as I say, to every single game. But my recommendation is just to leave this and to make sure that the rear M1 and M2 buttons have the set to secondary function box ticked to enable our shortcuts that I mentioned earlier. Otherwise, shortcuts won't work. The second, and what I would highly recommend, is on a game by game basis. And to do this, we select the game we want to remap. So in my case, the awesome PS5 remote play app called PX Play. Then press the X button for game options. Then set game profile. And whatever we change in this specific key mapping section only applies to this specific game. So for example, for PX Play, assign the B key as the M1 button, like you can see here and assign the control button as the M2 button like it is right here. So that when we load the PX Play app up, press start to make it full screen, and then connect to our PS5 console. The rear M2 button now is our PS button to bring up the menu, and the rear M1 button is now our touchpad. So in the case of the awesome Resident Evil 2, it brings up the map. It is essential to know that when gamepad in control mode is selected, then these new mappings do not work. I'm pressing M1 and M2 button here and nothing happens. So we have to set the control mode to auto. This is absolutely crucial and so important that we don't forget this. And now the rear M1 and M2 buttons work fine. Can I just say that PX Play is incredible if you want to remote play your PS5 console. It really does feel like we're playing the games natively on the Ally itself. You have to try this and I'll leave a link to my setup guide below. Another essential key remap I'd recommend is the Xbox app. If we go into the M2 button, then into the action tab and select the Xbox button like this. Those of us who remote play to our Xbox Series S or X console, when we now press the rear M2 button, it now brings up our menu button. Again, this is essential for us, just like the PS button is. And finally, for tip 10 is the solution to the most asked question, which is why buttons on the Ally aren't working, especially if you get loads of pop-ups and screenshots instead. And nine times out of 10, it's because in control mode, it's set to desktop. So make sure it's set to auto if we've remapped our keys like in the previous tip, or gamepad works great too. I'd love to hear what tips that you found are best for your RG Ally or Ally X in the comments below. And also let us know any areas that you want tips for. And if we get a ton of comments, then I'll make a follow up vid to this. Hit like if you found this useful and subscribe if you don't want to miss out on content just like this. And as a thank you for watching this far, I'd love to share this awesome quote. Distance yourself from people who bring out the stress in you and move closer to those who bring out the best in you. Ah uh, yes, it's a sad fact of life that there are toxic friends, family and work colleagues who really stress us out and bring out the worst in us. So let's stay away from those people who add a ton of unnecessary stress into our lives. And so stay encouraged today guys. If you still haven't optimized your ally, then click on the top right or set up amazing PS5 remote play using the PX Play app, as I mentioned earlier on the bottom right. I appreciate every single one of you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.